الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحج اشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فان خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا اولي الالباب صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ابا ذر الا اخبرك بعملين خفيف مؤونتهما عظيم اجرهما لم تلق الله بمثلهما فقال بلى يا رسول الله فقال اسمت حسن الخلق او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders beloved brothers in islam as we are aware we have just passed through the days of hajj this is a period of the returning hajis allah they are the recipients of the dua of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wherein our beloved master sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allahumma ighfir lil hajj wa liman istaghfara lahu al hajj He said, "Oh Allah, forgive the Haji. The Haji. This is that special benevolence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, distinction of Allah Taala, where through this nisbat of Hajj, through this association of Hajj, Allah has elevated them to the point where it's mentioned in the Hadith: Al Hujjaj wal Umar wafdullah. They are the delegation of Allah." and amongst the special distinctions which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the haji with is yu'tihim ma sa'alu that whatever dua they make whatever they ask from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah ta'ala will accept that dua one is dua on their behalf dua on behalf of others what we call sifarish or intercession on behalf of others this also is accepted by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That is why in the famous hadith on Arafah, Allah Taala addresses the Hajis in Arafah, and at the end of it, your sins be as many as the grains of sand, or as the, or as the waves and the foams of the ocean, or as the number of rain droplets. Afidu maghfuran lakum. Allah says, leave Arafah in such a condition, maghfuran lakum. You are forgiven, maghfur. You are already forgiven, but not only you. like we've mentioned previously hajj is a universal amal wali man shafa'atum lahu those on whose behalf you will seek intercession they also are forgiven such is the immense mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala certain points interestingly with this movement from arafa in the quran allah ta'ala refers to this movement Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Hajj Arafah Hajj is Arafah Now after Arafah it's almost as if you have reached the pinnacle of Hajj So what is the objective Allah Taala says in the Quran Fa idha afadtum min Arafat Fa idha afadtum min Arafat Allah Taala says when the Hajis leave Arafah Now if you look at this word afadtum Afadtum in Arabic comes from the root for, root word ifada, 
What is being referred to here is the movement out of Arafah. It should have been فَإِذَا خَرَجْتُمْ خَرَجَ يَخْرُجُ In Arabic is to leave. ذَهَبَ is to leave. Yet Allah doesn't say فَإِذَا خَرَجْتُمْ or فَإِذَا ذَهَبْتُمْ Allah says فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ Very barik, delicate distinction ulama kiram draw in this analogy, in this difference. What is ifada? Ifada technically is when something overflows. So when you overflow from Arafah, what does it mean? One is, if you have taken aerial vision of Arafah, the sea of Hujjaj, as they leave Arafah proceeding towards Muzdalifah, it will look like a river or, a, or an ocean that has overflowed. فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ When you overflow. Deeper underlying meaning behind this is that the returning haji and the one that he comes into contact with, there is an added responsibility. And what is that? What was the object of hajj? To find Allah, to connect with Allah. So a hajj which is carried out correctly, what happens is that the heart of the haji, the heart of the haji is now brimming is overflowing with the love of Allah. So, فَإِذَا أَفَضْتُمْ مِنْ Arafat, Take this love of Allah, take this connection of, with Allah that you have established through your hajj and overflow with it through the sea of humanity. Like the poet says, أَلَا قُلِّ زُوَّارِ دَارِ الْحَبِيبِ أَلَا قُلِّ زُوَّارِ دَارِ الْحَبِيبِ هنيئا لكم في الجنان الخلود أفيض علينا من الماء فيضا فنحن عطاش وأنتم ورود He says listen ألا قل لزوار دار الحبيب Say to the one who has visited دار الحبيب the home of my beloved بيت الله كعبة الله visited my Allah has completed his hajj. Haniyan lakum. Mubarak to you. Congratulations to you. Bil jinan al Of a jannat which is forever and ever. Why? Nabi Salaam said, Al hajjul mabrul laysa lahu jazaun illa al jannah. Accepted hajj. There is no other recompense but jannah. Then the second part of the poet, of the poem. Afidhu alayna min al ma'i fayda. The same word, ifada. Give us some of the water also. Give us, sprinkle some of that water that you have received. Sprinkle it upon us also. The non-haji is saying to the haji, Afidhu alayna min al Sprinkle some of that water. What water? The water of Allah's love. The water of Allah's ta'alluq. The water of this determination that you have changed your life. Afidhu alayna min al Fanahnu utashun. We are thirsty. Allah hasn't taken us. We are thirsty. You have drunk to your full. So Allah's Rasul وسلم, exhorted us in this dua. Allahumma gfil hajj. He said, oh Allah forgive the haji. And ask the haji to ask forgiveness for you. Why? Because this is also part of the dua of Rasulullah He said, anyone on whose behalf the haji seeks forgiveness, Allah forgive that person also. Why? Because this is a universal amal. The verse of the Quran which I recited in the beginning. Allah Ta'ala, as we know, when someone proceeds for hajj or umrah, he ties the ihram. By tying that ihram, he makes that hajj or umrah farz upon himself. And by tying that ihram, there are certain restrictions, certain prohibitions. That he takes upon himself that during the days of this ihram, I am not going to do any of these things. For example, killing of lice, cutting of the hair, etc. We know the prohibitions and the restrictions of ihram. Some of these restrictions and prohibitions are limited to the days of the ihram. Then there are certain restrictions and limitations which not only affect the days of ihram, but now that you have tied the ihram of hajj, even after you come out of that ihram, these restrictions, these prohibitions, the only time it will open up is at the time of mort, at the time of death. Allah Ta'ala speaking of this in the Quran, 
Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجِّ Al-Hajju Ashurun Ma'lumat The days of Hajj are set. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجِّ Those of you who have made Hajj farz upon yourself, tied the ihram of Hajj. فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Three general prohibitions specifically Quran speaks about. Those who are familiar with the Arabic language, there is an ajeeb nukta which Mufassirin have taken out of this verse. If you look at the first part and the second part, apparently there isn't a link. It shouldn't have been فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجْ فَلَا رَفَثْ وَلَا فُسُوقْ وَلَا جِدَالْ It should have been فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُقْ وَلَا يُجَادِلْ فِي الْحَجْ In other words, the verb in the present or future tense should have been used. Yet, Allah uses the master, the noun, فَلَا رَفَثْ وَلَا فُسُوقْ وَلَا جِدَالْ Mufassirin say in this is ishara, in this is indication. That this what Allah is speaking about, that the haji during ihram, stay away from this. This is beyond the ihram also. This is still mort. This is still death. And like in ihram, if you will do this, then you will have to give dam, or you will have to give jinayat, or you will have to give some tax, or your hajj, the value of it will be affected, will be diminished. In exactly the same way, after hajj also, after hajj also, every mu'min, every believer who will transgress these three things which Allah speaks about, his entire life will be made lopsided. His entire life will go upside down. He will have to make tawbah. He will have to turn in repentance. He will have to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will affect his entire life. What are the prohibitions which Quran speaks about? Not only for the haji, after hajj, every mu'min, every believer, that till mort and till death, this ihram has to be tied. First thing Allah says, فَلَا رَفَثْ Rafath in the context of this verse, Technically, refers to speech where there is a sexual innuendo, emotive speech, the speech of alluring speech with one's wife or with one's partner or with one's spouse. But there is a general prohibition. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Tie the ihram of this tongue. Ghibat, backbiting, slandering. Hurting the feelings of others. Unnecessary speech. What we call behuda kalam. Useless speech. This ihram. This ihram has to be tied till mort. This power of speech which Allah has given. We take it for granted. This is such an ajeeb. Such an astonishing mazhara. Display of the qudrat and the power of Allah. When Allah speaks of this particular ni'mat and bounty of speech, the Quran tells us, Allamahul bayan. Allah taught you how to speak. When Allah refers to this, what does Allah say? Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. Allama al Quran. Khalaq al Insan. Allamahul bayan. What does this mean? This surah begins in... An, this surah is Rusul Qur'an, the bride of the Qur'an. And how does Allah introduce this Qur'an? Ar-Rahman. How does Allah introduce this surah? Ar-Rahman. The benevolent, the kind, rahmat, mercy, compassion. The kind Allah, the merciful Allah. Rahman Allah. And what is the manifestation, the proof? This is da'wah and dalil. Allah makes a claim. Allah is very merciful, very kind, very compassionate. And what is the proof of it? Allamahul bayan. Allah gave you the ability to speak. My thoughts you can't see. Can you see my thoughts? In seconds, milliseconds, what I am thinking is being trans transformed into electrical impulses. They are traveling at the speed of 124 kilometers per hour to my tongue. The movement of my tongue also you can't see. Sound waves are being produced. In each of your ears, Allah has placed 100,000 receptors for sound. 
These sound waves are being carried on the shoulder of Allah's wind. They are striking those receptors. Behind those receptors are three, three bones, hammer, stirrup, anvil. They amplify these sound waves. Behind that, there is the inner ear or the cochlea. In it is an instrument that looks like a harp, a musical instrument. It has 6,000 strings. It sits in a pool of liquid. Each of these strings vibrate to a different frequency of sound. These sound waves strike them. They start vibrating. 18,000 nerve cells amplify those vibrations. They are converted into electrical impulses. They travel at the speed of 124 kilometers per hour to your brain. And instantaneously, you are able to understand what I am saying. Ar-Rahman. How kind and compassionate and merciful is Allah. What a great statement of his mercy and compassion is this ability to speak, to comprehend. So do not take this ni'mat for granted. Do not take this ni'mat for granted. Do not take this ni'mat for granted. This ni'mat of speech is your jannat or your jahannam. I am not saying it. Famous hadith of Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who is Mu'az? Mu'az is that Sahabi amongst the galaxy of Sahaba. Amongst the galaxy of Sahaba. This is that Sahabi that has a special distinction. That Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa directly addressed him. And said, Ya Mu'az, inni uhibbuk. Mu'az, I love you. Mu'az, I love you. This, that is his caliber. This is that Sahabi... Allah's Rasul Sallallahu said on the day of Qiyamah, Mu'az will rise up with the flag of the ulama of my ummah in his hand. He will be the imam of the ulama of the ummah. That caliber, that rank and yet this masala of speech, this masala of speech, how many ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Guarantee me, guarantee me, guarantee me that you will control this tongue and I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa guarantee you jannat. Control this tongue, this is your jannat or your jahannam. He said to Muaz, Ala ukhbiruka bimilaki al-amri kullihi bimilaki dhalika lindi hadith. Time is limited, I'm not going into the details. In that hadith, iman is mentioned, salah is mentioned, jihad is mentioned. The, the whole of deen is mentioned and then at the end of the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says Mu'az should I not show you milaki hadha al-amr what is the nichor the essence of everything your whole deen dharwatu thin sinami comes in one hadith what is the height what is the pinnacle in other words everything boils down to this he said bala ya Rasulullah Nabi of Allah tell me what is it what is the essence what is the one thing that I cannot leave. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is he speaking to? He's not speaking to an ordinary person. He's speaking to the leader of the ulama of the ummah. An intelligent person. And yet, because this matter is so important. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. Like you would explain to a little child. So no one can misunderstand. And there is no ambiguity. Akhada bi lisanihi. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes hold of his own tongue takes hold of his own tongue and says, Kuffa alayka hadha, amlik alayka lisanak. Mu'az, salah, zakat, hajj, jihad, the whole of deen, the khulasa, the essence, control this piece of flesh. Control this piece of flesh. This is a snake. This is a snake for the cobra, and the venomous snakes that they are in the jungles of Africa, they have found serums for their poison. But by the qasam of my Allah, I'm sitting on the mimbar of the masjid. This snake, there's no serum for its poison. The poison and the hurt that this snake can inflict, this will break marriages. It will break homes. It will break relationships. It will break hearts. And it will cause that kind of damage. That a person will go into the cover also and you will carry that hurt with him. People will stop talking to one another for years because of the wound that is inflicted by this snake. There is nothing more dangerous, nothing more dangerous. 
one hand this is your jannat on the other hand many many riwayat many many riwayat nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said someone will say something he will say something what to and that too he will say it in such a way just as a joke to lighten up the majlis yet as a result of it tahwi biha fi jahannam allah will throw him into jahannam a distance greater than the earth to the heavens because of what he what he uttered amlik alayka lisana kuff alayka lisana he said muaz muaz the essence of deen the essence of deen the ihdas ihram you have to wait till mort and this ihram you can never open control this tongue control this tongue control muaz when he hears this he shocked salah zakat hajj jihad and my nabi says the essence of everything is this tongue so he says wahal yakubun he says ya rasul allah allah is going to take us to task for what is this tongue going to inflict such damage is this so important are we going to be taken to task because of the utterance of our tongue when nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam hears this from muaz he retorts thakilat ka ummuk ya muaz muaz what's wrong with you muaz what's wrong with you understand hal yakubun nas hal yakubun nas ala wujuhihim wa fi riwayatin ala manakhirihim fi nar jahannam illa khasaid alsinatihim laz rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to muaz muaz there is nothing 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 not zina not sharab not qatl there is nothing there is no kabira guna there is no major sin that will cause more people of my ummah face down to be flung into jahannam illa hasaid wa alsinatihim like the utterance of the tongue will cause this like the utterance of the tongue will cause this this is your jahan jannat or this is your jahannam if we learn no other lesson from hajj learn this lesson fala rafat once nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to abu zar ya aba zar o abu zar ala ukhbiruka bi amalain khafif maunatuhuma عظيم اجرهما لم تلق الله بمثلهما الله اكبر such a mushfiq such a kind such a compassionate master and teacher like muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is impossible to find الله اكبر look at this look at the manner in which nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam presents this he says o oh, abu dhar should i not show you something ala ukhbiruka or ala adulluka should i not show you something abu zar should i not show you something before he tells him what it is look at the description rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gives it's like when somebody is wants to make you understand the value of something they they present it in such a way that your mouth begins to salivate you want to know what is this khafifin maunatu abu zar What I am about to tell you is very easy to do, very little effort. Khafif in mauna tuma, no effort required, no effort. You don't have to break your back. You don't have to stand in tahajjud the whole night. You don't have to make wuzu in the bitter cold. You don't have to go four months and six months and eight months and one year in the bath of Allah. Separate yourself from your family. What I am about to show you, khafif in mauna tuma, very little effort. contrary to this azim in ajruhuma abu zar the reward very great effort very little khafif in maunatuhuma azim in ajruhuma reward very great how great allahu akbar what does nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam say lam talqallaha bi mithlihima no one no one no one on the day of judgment will meet allah with anything that will carry more reward than this lam talqa allah bi mithli ma there's nothing that you can do in reward that will equal the reward of what i'm about to tell you so what you would expect is going to be very difficult lot of work lot of hardship but nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said khafifin 
Very less effort, maximum reward. No one will meet Allah with anything that will carry this reward. Abu Zad is jumping up and down. Ya Rasulullah, tell me what is this? Allahu Akbar. What is the first thing Nabi Islam says? Assam. Assam. Control the snake. Keep quiet. Assam. Keep silent. Don't speak. Don't speak. Allah has placed 32 locks in front of this tongue. And then in front of that, Allah has placed another main gate. 32 locks physiologically, biologically, in front of this tongue. And then another main gate. Why? Because before you let the snake loose, think. Stop. Caution yourself. To speak requires effort. To keep silent, no effort required. Keep this tongue closed. No matter how angry, how upset, whether it's the wife, whether it's the staff, whether it's the child, whether it's your friend who you come into contact with. Ghibat, very, very nice to talk about somebody else. Very exciting. What? Ashaddu min zina my Nabi Islam said, that is worse than committing zina. Today the masjid is not safe also. He looked at the Kaaba. He looked at the Kaaba. And he said, how beautiful you are. How sacred you are. How sanctimonious you are. And then my Nabi turned to a Sahabi and he said to him, that know and understand the the dignity, honor of a mu'min is greater than that of the Kaaba. In other words, insult the Kaaba. It's a smaller sin than insulting your fellow Muslim brother. The pain that you will inflict with this tongue. My Nabi Islam said, Abu Zar, Sahaba mentioned sometimes weeks would pass and he wouldn't utter a single word. This hadith is not stopping us from speaking. No. Don't speak what is incorrect. Don't hurt the feel. This, the, Allahu Akbar. We want to understand the effect of the harm of the tongue. Understand it in the context of seerah. Understand it in the context of seerah. My Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Mina, what did they do to him? They pelted him with stones. In Taif, three miles. Three miles he was pelted with stones. He was persecuted. In Ohad, what happened in Ohad? What happened in Ohad? Utba bin Abi Waqas through the rock. The rock smashed down on the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Causing his tut mubarak to become shaheed. He fell back. The back of his neck hit another rock. As a result of which Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa fell down unconscious. In other words, physical pain like we can't believe. And yet, for the people of Taif, what did Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa do? He made the istiqbal. When they came to accept Islam, he put up a tent for them, particularly in Masjid al Nabawi. He would he arrange food for them. Each day he would specially go and sit with the people of Taif. The same people that pelted him for three miles. One day he got late. He offered excuse. He said, please forgive me. I had my section of Quran which I had not completed. This is why I got late. I didn't come on time to sit with you people. Forgave them. In Ohad, Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, udu Allah alayhim, make bad dua for them. He raised his hand, Allahumma mahdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, give hidayat to them because they don't know what they are doing. That was physical harm. When it came to the harm of the tongue, when it came to the harm of the tongue, just one incident to make us understand the difference. Directly from seerah, this is the heart of a Nabi. The bardasht of a Nabi, the khilm of a Nabi, the tolerance of a Nabi, we can't imagine. Mountain of tolerance yet. Yet, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves Medina Munawara to proceed to Makkah for Fateh Makkah, for the conquest of Makkah, now they are marching towards Makkah on the way. Fazal bin Abbas, Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umm Fazal, his wife, Abdullah bin Abbas, Fazal bin Abbas, this family, is coming towards Medina. They don't know that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left for Makkah. They're coming towards Medina to accept Islam. They meet Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the way. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gladly accepts the Islam and says to them that you are the last of the Muhajireen. Because after this the door to Hijrat will close. With them are another two Sahaba. Who are they? Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah. Who is Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah? 
He is the son of Atika bint Abdul Muttalib. Atika was the aunt, the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, the aunt of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the sister of Abu Talib. So one is his maternal cousin. With him is Abu Sufyan, famous Abu Sufyan bin Harb. We know this is Abu Sufyan bin Harith. Harith was the eldest son of Abdul Muttalib, also the brother of Abu Talib, the brother of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's father. Abdullah, his son, Abu Sufyan bin Harith. So both are cousins. One from the father's side, one from the uncle, one from the aunt. They are with this kafla. When Nabi Salaam hears that they have come to accept Islam, he says, "Do not even give them permission to enter. I have no need for the Islam. I am not prepared to accept the Islam." What was the reason? Rahmatul lil alamin. A mercy unto humanity, yet the pain of the heart, the hurt. What was the hurt in Mecca? In Mecca, once the delegation of Quraysh they sent for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The light of the heart of the Nabi is light. These people are going to accept Islam. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes to them. He's happy. They present all sorts of. Unconscionable demands. Do this and do this and do this and do that. I'm getting, cutting the incident short. Time has already run out. Then only we will accept you as Allah's Nabi. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam heartbroken because his hopes had been lifted up that they are going to accept Islam. Now they come with all these ridiculous requests. Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says to them that listen, what you are asking for, I cannot do that. I cannot even ask from Allah Taala. Accept if it is in your takdir to accept. Allah will guide you. Otherwise, reject and then wait for Allah's decision. Heartbroken, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaves. Abdullah bin Abi Umayya, the son of Atika, he follows Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the cousin of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Muhammad, your people put all these requests in front of you. Why didn't you accept? Why didn't you accept? Your arrogance is such, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that you refuse to accept. He says, "Now, if you get a ladder and you go up to the heavens and you go right up to Allah Taala, and Allah Taala gives you in writing that you are His Nabi and places His seal upon it, and then four malaika are witness to this, to that, and they come down with you to say that you are Allah's Nabi, I am still not prepared to accept. I won't accept Allah's seal. I won't accept that Allah's epistle. I won't accept Allah's angels. I won't accept the letter from the heaven. I'm not prepared to ever accept that you are the Nabi of Allah. Quran mentions is لن نؤمن لك حتى تفجر لنا من الأرض ينبوعا أو تكون لك بيت من زخرف أو ترقى في السماء ولن نؤمن لرقيك حتى تنزل علينا كتابا نقرأه. This entire Insult of Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah is mentioned in the Quran. Also, there's no time to go into detail. This hurt. What? Abdullah bin Abi Umayyah didn't fling any rocks. He didn't do what the people of Taif did. But this hurt was the hurt of the tongue. This pain affected the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So many years later, who was Abu Sufyan bin Harith? He used to recite poems in the gullies and alleys of Mecca, insulting Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Again, no stone, no rock, no stick, but the pain and the hurt of the tongue affected a Nabi of Allah to this extent that his own family members he refused to accept the Islam. Umm Salma, radiyallahu anha, Ummul Mu'minin, one of the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, also the sister of Abdullah bin Abi Umayya. Allah had given her intelligence. Allah had given her understanding, perception of a very high level. She interceded, "Ya Rasulullah, you are a person of sila rahmi. You join family ties. They are your family. Accept them. They are sorry. They have come now to accept Islam. If you are going to turn them away, they are going to be destroyed forever and ever." With this intercession, over and over again of Umm Salma, finally Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam relented. And he allowed them to come, and he accepted their tawbah, and he accepted their Islam, and he forgave them. The point or the lesson from Sira: "فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثْ." This ihram, this ihram of the tongue, this tongue is either your jannah or your jahannam. 
with your wife, with your children, with your staff, in your home. Today we understand Deendari, Tahajjud, Zikrullah, Tilawat of Quran, going in the path of Allah. All that is necessary, we can't deny that. But with that, my respected brothers, with that is akhlaq, with that is character. Ulama say, husne akhlaq, husne kalam ke baghair na mumkin hai. They say beautification of one's akhlaq, making your home, making your family. Now nikahs are to take place, to become a wife or a husband that is sukoon and peace. For the home in this world to be jannat on this earth. For your daily life to be jannah, for you to be somebody that people are comfortable with. What did my Nabi say? Who is the greatest Muslim? He said, the one who when he opens his mouth, flowers come out, thorns don't come out. Man salim al muslimun min lisanihi wa People are safe. People are safe. You are not a snake. You are not harming. You are not hurting, insulting, swearing, picking, ghibat. Chugli, backbiting, hurting, inflicting. My respected brothers, this is like a hole in a bucket. All your tahajjud, all your zikrullah, all your tilawat, all your ibadat, all your striving in the path of Allah, sitting in the sohbat of a sheikh, all that. Allah protect us. This is like that hole in the bucket that will wipe away all that if we won't learn to control this. Abu Zar, Abu Zar, should I not show you two things? Two things. Very little effort, maximum reward. No one will meet Allah with anything that will carry reward like this. My Nabi said, Assam, silence. In other words, avoid unnecessary speech. Wa husnul khuluk. And because it is linked to it, beautification of your akhlaq and character. Three prohibitions Allah mentions in this verse. Fala rafath, wala fusuq, wala jidal. Literal translation. One is pertinent to one's speech, particularly alluring speech and then control of general speech. Second, wala fusuk, abstain from major sins. And the third, wala jidal, abstain from conflict, abstain from tor, abstain from breaking up into different groups and factions and fighting with one another. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, we're not going into detail, but... All of this, the essence of it, gain control of this tongue, this ihram, haji or non-haji. Every believer, this ihram we have to tie right up till moth. Allah give us tawfiq wa